Last week, I took you through seven different types of digital products that you can create to sell and make passive income and do the darn thing in your business, in your brand, etc., etc., etc. And today, I want to talk to you about how you actually create them and how you actually sell them. So, it's not enough to just know what they are and which one you want to do, but now I'm going to talk about how you actually create them, how you actually sell them, and how you actually get people to buy them. Let's go. So hello, welcome back. Thank you for being here. If this were to be the first time that you are finding me, my name is Jessica Stansberry and I am here to help you work less, live more, and make more money because that is what I am about. So if you're like, oh girl, yes, let me learn more about that, then make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any other tips and tricks each week here on this channel. Uh, <laughs> I just noticed <laughs> my tongue is really red. I ate a red Jolly Rancher right before I started filming. So if you're wondering, that's what's going on there. Before we get started, I want to mention again about the digital product blueprint that I have created for you. It is literally a blueprint on how to create and sell digital products. So if that is something you want to learn more about after watching this video, definitely go grab that. I will put the link across the screen right here as well as below in the description, but just head over to heyjessica.com forward slash digi product blueprint to grab that. So one of the very first videos that I put out here on YouTube was called how to create and sell digital products. And I mentioned in last week's video that kind of blew up without me knowing it. And it was something that got a ton of views for a really long time. And I filmed it in 2016. So I feel like we need an updated version of this and an updated version of Jessica's brain on this too, because I was very new to creating digital products at that point. And now we're several years in to creating them pretty consistently. And I can give you a little bit better of advice. Okay, so the first thing I want you to think about is what type of digital product do you, do you actually wanna sell? Now you can reference last week's video all about seven different types of digital products that you can sell and kind of go through those and see what fits your needs best. But you first need to determine which one of these digital products you actually want to sell. Now I want to talk about like how you make that decision. How do you come to the point where you're like, I want to make an ebook or I want to make a workbook or whatever. And essentially it's not that hard. Basically, you need to figure out what your client or customer or your ideal client or customer, the person you want to buy this thing from you, what they're struggling with that you can help them with, what they're struggling with that you have a solution for, okay? So what are they having issues with that you have the answer to their problem? Y'all, this lighting in here is a partly cloudy day and I know better than to film on a partly cloudy day because it gets cloudy and then sunny and cloudy and sunny. But y'all are just gonna have to be okay with it. Okay, so once you kind of figure out what they need help with and how you can help them with that, what kind of solutions you have to give them, then you can kind of see, you can use process of elimination on the different types of digital products that there are to create and say, you know, that solution can't really be delivered in that way, that, can, that solution can't really be delivered in that way, um, this way might work, this way might work, et cetera, et cetera. So again, all the ways that I talked about last week are applicable. So we've got eBooks, workbooks, digital planners, journals, that kind of thing. Templates for systems and programs. Printables, digital art, and swipe files are everything I covered last week. And there are some more that I have listed out in that blueprint that I mentioned in the beginning and that I have linked below in the description. But essentially, use process of elimination. Okay, you know, I need to give them this and it won't, like I can't deliver them that in this format. Okay, we don't need to do that. Then get in the mind of your client or customer and say, okay, how would they best like to receive this information of these choices? Would they like to just have a swipe file where I give them a copy um, and they can copy and paste it into whatever they want? Would they like to have a template? Would they like to have a workbook or an ebook? How would they prefer to get that information? And if you have any type of audience already established, ask them. 
Go on Instagram stories and do a poll. Go here on YouTube in the community tab and ask them a question. You can ask them things. Like don't feel like you can't ask your audience for their feedback. If you don't already have an audience and you want to know, you know, which one would be best, go find one or two people who fit your ideal client avatar and who have the same problem and go ask them. Say, okay, I know that you have this problem and I wanna create a resource to help you solve that problem. Which one of these is best? So you've got to figure out what is going to work best as a digital product to solve the problem you're trying to solve. So that's the first step, is really figuring out what you're going to create, right? And what you're gonna sell. The second step to this is how do you actually create it, right? Every different type of, <laughs> I can't stop looking at my tongue now. Every different type of digital product is going to have a different way you can create it and a different way you can sell it. And every person is going to have a different preference for how they're going to create and sell, okay? So I'm gonna name off some things you can use to create your digital product, but don't think it's exhaustive or that it's the only thing you can use. And don't feel like, you know, because I said you need to use, or because I said like this was an option and I didn't mention this thing that does it very similarly that you can't use that thing that you like better. I'll explain more in a minute, but everything's going to have multiple ways to get it done. And I'm going to be as simplistic as I possibly can and point you in the easiest ways to do it, but that doesn't mean you can't do it in a different way. So I'm gonna start kind of at the easiest and go, go to kind of the hardest, I guess, would be how we're gonna do this as far as how to create them. So when you have something that's text-based, like a swipe file for copy or a ebook or a workbook, do not make this harder than it has to be. You can create it in a Google Doc, download it as a PDF, and give it to them that way. You can create it in a Google Doc and send them the link to make their own copy and sell it that way. You do not have to overcomplicate this. So if you're wanting to make an ebook or a workbook or SWAT files or something that is text-based, don't hesitate to use the easiest tool you have at your disposal, which is basically Google Docs. Now you might want to, for like a workbook or an ebook, you might want to have a graphic created or you might want to create a graphic for the cover or something like that, but don't feel like you have to go too overcomplicated. The importance here is the information that you're giving. It's not how beautiful it is that you, when you deliver it. Now I'm not negating that beauty is worth a lot with these types of things that you should like completely ignore the looks of something. Absolutely not. But if you, you know, are just wanting to get started and the looks of something is going to hold you back, then don't let it hold you back. <laughs> um, create it in Google Docs, sell it, and go on about your day, okay? So text-based, you wanna start on something like Google Docs. If you are familiar with Canva, you can also use something like Canva. Then you could also, if you wanna up-level even more from that, there's like Adobe InDesign. So if that is something you're familiar with, you can use it. But if you're not familiar with it, don't think that that's what you have to use to get it done. Use Google Docs, okay? And that leads me to kind of my next step here. If you're creating something that is graphics based, so you're creating digital art, you're creating downloadables that are for graphics, you're creating templates that are for graphics, you're creating anything like that, do not make it hard. Don't make it hard, use Canva or some other type of similar solution. You don't have to you know, hire a graphic designer, you don't have to use Photoshop, you don't have to use Illustrator, you don't have to use any of that. You can absolutely use a simple system like Canva to create the graphics that you need to create to get that digital product out into the world. You'll notice a theme here, guys. I do not believe in overcomplicating anything. And this is probably one of the biggest changes um, for me as I've created and sold digital products for several years now is that in the past, I was really stuck on this is the best way to do it. This is the best way to do it. This is the best way to do it. And I had to do it that way, even if it took me 10,000 times longer. And I don't believe that way at all anymore. I honestly think that done is better than perfect. Getting the information and the things in the hands of the people is better than holding on to it because you don't have the money to hire that person to create it for you when we have all these tools at our disposal to create them ourselves. 
So if you're creating any kind of graphics, like I say, downloadable art, templates of any kind that are graphic based, et cetera, et cetera, you'll want to use something like Canva. And Canva is really freaking easy. I'm someone who literally started her business because I loved Photoshop and because I loved creating things in Photoshop. And it took me a really long time to kind of get on the Canva train because I was like, oh, I don't have the same like abilities and capabilities and things like that. But I love Canva now as a user. And so don't overcomplicate it and think you have to teach yourself all these new systems. Use what's there and what works. Now, if you're creating something that is a template for a software, then you would obviously create that template in that software. So if it's a Photoshop template, you're gonna wanna create it in Photoshop. If it is a ClickUp template, then you're gonna wanna create it in ClickUp. If it's a Trello board, you're gonna wanna create it in Trello. If it is a Canva specific template, you're gonna wanna create it in Canva. So the template part is kind of easy. Like if you wanna create a template, then you already know what system you need to use to create that with. So that kind of thing is kind of self-explanatory. So that really breaks down how to create the things that you wanna sell digitally. And if I didn't specifically list off like the thing you're thinking of, I tried to make it where if it's text-based, use this. If it's graphics-based, use this. If it's template-based, use the system you're creating it for. And honestly, there's not much else above that. If you're creating stock photos, which might be one of the options, then obviously you would create that with your camera. So do not overcomplicate this. Get it done. However you need to get it done, get it done. People aren't going to care near as much about the perfection of it as they are about the actual use of it in their journey in whatever they're trying to use it for. So take my digital planners for instance. We create all of the digital planners at Hey Jessica in InDesign. I, but I like literally hailed from the world of InDesign. Um, my college career was putting things in InDesign um, and Photoshop and Adobe systems and I've used them my entire life. Well, since college anyway. So of course that was the system I used when I went to build out my digital planners. But I know tons of successful digital planner sellers who create their digital planners in Keynote. Now, I don't know how. I assume you can link up the tabs in Keynote just the same as you can in um, InDesign, but nonetheless, obviously it's easier. Do what's easier. There are people who are making six figures selling the same digital planners or similar digital planners to me, and they're creating them in Keynote. Get it done. You could also probably create a digital planner or a digital workbook or a digital notebook or anything in that category in Canva. Don't overcomplicate this. Okay, so after you've figured out what you actually want to sell, how you're gonna provide a solution to a person, and you figured out how to create that thing, third, you need to figure out how to actually get it in the hands of the person buying it. And now this, is also another way where I have realized through the years that easier is better. Do what works for you in the situation you're in right now. You can change it later, you can upgrade it later, you can do all the things later, okay? So how, how do you actually sell these digital products? Because they're digital, you obviously have to have a system that's gonna allow for the person to be able to purchase and then get a download link or purchase and get a clickable link or something like that to take them to what they just purchased. So there's gonna be basically two different ways you're gonna deliver digital products. One is that after purchase, they actually get the download link. Like they get a button that says download this file. Like, you know, download your stock photos, download your art, download your ebook download whatever else you purchased, okay? They're actually going to get a button that says download and they're gonna download it. The second option is that you are going to deliver them a link to somewhere after the purchase that is not a direct download link. And that could be, you know, maybe you're creating templates for Canva. You can't actually download a Canva template. So you have to send them to the template on the internet or you've created a Google Doc that is a template for them, so you can't actually download that Google Doc in a way that will allow them to use it, so you need to send them to Google Docs. So that's really the two different ways you can deliver 
these things when you sell them is direct download if it's something that is applicable for that and then linking over to somewhere other than a direct download. Now, both of these options can be delivered at checkout slash after checkout with a system, et cetera, et cetera, or they can be delivered via email. So the simplest way to sell your digital product, and I say simplest as in you don't need to pay for anything more than you're paying now. You don't need to you know, do anything crazy. Um, I don't necessarily mean simple and set up because it may take you a little bit longer to set this up and a little more Google juice. But essentially, if you want to, if you are like, I'm going to do this on a bootstrapping budget, I'm going to do this without a ton of, you know, like money going to other systems to help me deliver this thing. And I don't even have a website yet or whatever. You can absolutely embed a PayPal button for the amount that your thing costs on a page somewhere on the internet, on your own site, on a lead page, whatever, and send people there to purchase and then sync that PayPal button to your email marketing system and get them an email on purchase that gives them the download link. So when I'm getting ready to list off the ways to actually sell and the programs I'm going to mention, if you do not want to use one of these programs, if you don't want to spend the money on a program that you don't already have, and some of these you may already be paying for, then don't. <laughs> like you can absolutely do PayPal button, link, delivered via email. It, it does not have to be hard, okay? There are systems out there specifically dedicated to delivering digital products. Now, the one I'm gonna mention is called Send Owl. This is not sponsored or anything like that. It's just the one that I have personally worked with in the past, worked with clients on, and also have purchased some things that are delivered in that way. And it it's good. I mean, if you don't have your own website, if you are trying to sell in a really simple and easy way. It's a really great system and it's fairly cheap per month. So they have a basics plan that's like nine bucks a month. They And then it goes on up to like 24 and $39 a month. So if you're selling a $24 thing, then if you sell it one time, you have paid for the cost of this program. And Send Owl specifically is dedicated to selling and delivering digital products. So you're, you know that you're, like it's actually gonna be able to do what you want it to do because it's literally designed for that. Now, the second option would be to set it up and sell it on your own e-commerce store through something like Shopify, through something like Shopify or WordPress and WooCommerce. I use WooCommerce when I'm selling my digital products. Now, as far as selling courses and things like that, I set those up in a different way, but I do use WooCommerce to sell my digital products and they do have the option, if you're using WordPress already, self-hosted WordPress, to install WooCommerce and sell digitally all day long without any added fees per month. And if you were to already have a Shopify site or something like that, you could also set up selling digital products on your Shopify site. The third option that I want to mention, and this one is, Probably, if I was gonna say start somewhere, if you're not big on tech, if you really want a simple out of the box system, if you really want to be able to get traffic to your digital products without you having to do a ton of work right now, these are the options that I would probably tell you to do, okay? And you can couple these options with any of the other options we're gonna talk about as well. So let me explain. We've all heard of Etsy, right? <laughs> um, Etsy was predominantly a physical product site until a few years ago when they added the option to sell digital products. So if you have some type of digital product or if you have a suite of digital products, you can absolutely set it up on Etsy to sell it that way. Now, Etsy's gonna take more fees from you. Etsy's gonna charge you know, per transaction and Etsy does charge you to list things in your store. But in addition to that, they also have their own vat of traffic that is coming over all the time. So it's, it could be a really great place to start if you don't have a ton of traffic on your own site, if you don't have a site set up yet, that kind of thing, you can use Etsy. 
Now, creative market is very, very similar. It's just that it is generally more templates and things that people can use um, in that way rather than something like a workbook or whatever. So on creative market, you're probably not going to want to sell an ebook or information, but you can sell templates and things like that really easily over there. And it's set up in the same way that Etsy is. So when I said you could kind of couple this, I do this on Etsy with my digital planners. So I never, ever, 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 ever send somebody personally to my Etsy store. Why? because I can't collect their email address on purchase because Etsy is taking more fees out of that transaction than if they just buy through my site and because there's a lot of other reasons. But now I'm not personally going to send somebody to Etsy to purchase them because I'd rather them purchase them on my site. But you can all you can kind of use these in an intertwined way to kind of take advantage of the Etsy traffic, but also use your own as well. Okay, the last way I'm going to talk about selling your digital products is more of an intricate way. And it's definitely more of a way that you're going to explore after you've done this a little bit more than just getting started. And that is in a funnel. Now you can use a system like lead pages. You can use a system like click funnels. I have my funnels in a way where my sales pages are built on my own site. And then when they check out it, they check out through Thrivecart. So my funnels are technically built through Thrivecart, but selling digital products in a funnel can increase the cart value of every transaction. Let me give you an example. I have talked a little bit about this before, but I sell my, I sell a digital planning starter pack in a funnel, in a bundle. And essentially it's not available on my site just to go purchase. You have to go through the funnel to purchase it, which essentially just means going through like a whole sales page to purchase. And there's a whole checkout process rather than being able to like add it to a cart, if that makes sense. So, the reason I do that with that specific thing is that I wanted to be able to not only sell this digital planning starter pack, but also then upsell people and increase my cart value with every possible sale by giving them other things they need besides this digital planner. So for me, I specifically wanted to kind of filter out like on purchase filter out the people who are entrepreneurs buying this and the people who are not. And the reason is I don't have anything else to sell those people who are not. And I love them and I'm glad they're there and yay for them. And I'm glad they got their digital planner, but like I don't have anything else to sell them because I teach entrepreneurs. This digital planner thing for me kind of happened on accident and it's a massive arm of my business that I don't want to just cut off, right? So this was a way for me to say, I'm going to sell these, I'm going to make money and I'm going to use it as a way to say, okay, the, if, if they bought any of these things on purchase through my funnel, they're entrepreneurs. If they didn't, they're not. So if I was wanting to be the planner girl, right? Then in my funnel, I might sell them a, this $27 digital planning starter pack or $24 digital planning starter pack. And then on checkout, I could have them check a box for $7 for an extra sheet of stickers or a hundred extra stickers or something like that. Then they would also get an offer before they check out for maybe like seven more planner layouts. I don't know. I'm just throwing things at the wall right now, but essentially I'm selling it in a funnel so that I can increase the cart value. Okay. So if you have something, a digital product that you're ready to take to the next level, the funnel is the next level. You can set that up. It's a little more intricate, but you can set it up with systems. Like I say, like click funnels, lead pages. I have mine with my own WordPress site as the sales page linked to Thrivecart but you can set this up in a ton of different ways and this can really help you turn your digital product into something that grows your email list into something that you can run ads to into something that makes you more than just that small digital product cost so this was actually a longer video than i had planned but i really wanted to go in depth with 
how you sell them, how you create them, so that you didn't have any questions when you left. When you leave this video, I really want you to be able to go take action. So what I want you to do is, one, if you've not downloaded the digital product blueprint, I want you to go do that. The link is in the description below, or you can go to heyjessica.com forward slash digiproductblueprint, and that will help also get you started in addition to everything you learned today. But two, if you have any other questions about digital products in any way, leave them in the comments below so I can see where there might be holes in what I've been teaching you and I can hopefully bring you more videos in the future to help you do the darn thing. And do not forget that if you loved this video, make sure to hit subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell so you are notified every single time Yo Girl Jessica here drops a new video, which is like, every week on Tuesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Nope, at 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bye, y'all.